Okay, we're back. I don't like the music. Just gonna... I'm just gonna change the music for a sec. Or for a few minutes. Because my computer is low.
Okay. Hopefully this will work. change I want to check if um, I'm streaming on Leechas hopefully my name is there so I can advertise more people I'll just start okay so uh, today I want to uh, discuss an opening um, against Sicilian and this is one as a C Sicilian player uh, myself um, against E4 as black I this is one of my least favorite system against Sicilian it's Sicilian Bishop B5 uh, check the uh, Moscow uh, and I I don't like it. Uh, we're got this is I'm trying to build an opening repertoire for white uh, as e4 against this against any kind of opening. Uh, usually I play d4, but it's nice to have a different kind of opening. So it's it's hard for your opponent to predict what your what you're going to play next. And I as I read in. Um, I read in uh, Vladimir Kramnik's book and Evgeny Barif. Those are both grandmasters. The book is titled uh, London to Alista. It's a chronicle of how Vladimir Kramnik uh, fought against uh, Garry Kasparov, Peter Leko, and Veselin Topolov in uh, the three chess world championships, which uh, Vladimir Kramnik uh, already won. But his one of his main style in opening, in, in playing chess in matches is to win with white and draw with black. So for him, for his chess world chess championships, uh, in um, in in those uh, game, he it's okay for you to have at least one solid opening because what you're trying to do is if you really know that opening as black it's it's harder for your opponent to beat you and you have confidence in playing the, the same opening over and over again but with white he recommended to have as many systems as you can because with you with white since you have the first move you're trying to win right away you're trying to get an advantage you're trying to win as white uh, but these days it's hard it's challenging if you don't have a lot of openings, like my uh, coach, international master coach Joel Benawa always tell me, to be good in openings because when he, he when he was trying to earn his international master norms, it's 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 he needs to win a tournament. He most of the time in those nine round round robin tournaments, he needs to get like six point five or. Or in other words, you need to win the tournament in order to get that international master in arm. So, what he's telling me, okay, it's nice to have a solid opening, but you gotta have like sharper openings, especially if you need to win. So, that's one of the backgrounds why, uh, for like, it's good to have an opening. It's good to have a very good opening repertoire, 
compared to a few years ago where there was there were no computers right now it's just computer age and it's uh, there there are many books uh, there are many good websites that you can use uh, for me I, I, I read the books I recommend uh, Grandmaster Roberto books uh, playing serious books um, what else like everyman chess books that you can uh, that are published by everyman everyman publishing so yeah I mean that's my take in the opening what I'm gonna do is in the opening usually I, I get books like good books like uh, GM repertoire then I start with the most popular lines I go to chess base uh, to see the statistics the chess base live online and see the statistics now what is the most popular line and I start from there then I input it on chess base like the whole the whole annotation all the moves all annotations then I try to divide them in a single game because I learned that even that if I have my system of openings on a chess base uh, with all the variations in there, it's hard for me to remember. It's hard for me to memorize them, absorb them, uh, compared to when these games are separated by just one variation at a time. Because what I do is, after, for example, after I input this on chess base and I divide it into single game, each variation is divided into single game, which I will show you later. Um, then it's easier for me to review them especially before a tournament where i look up my opponent's games and i look you know what 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 are gonna do if i play this move at least i have an idea at least it's more organized compared before where i don't have that system of openings uh, and also if you want to get better in blitz it's nice to really know your openings the plans not just the, the moves but the plans uh, what are the maneuvers in that position? What are the what are the pawn structures? Where where are your your pawn breaks? Those are very important things that you want to uh, to learn. Okay, so Sicilian Bishop B5. This is what we're gonna do, and this is what most or some Sicilian players like me hate when uh, I play as Black uh, against uh, Sicilian opening because. Most Sicilian players like me, I, I spend a lot of time on the main line. On the main line where, let's see. Like here, let's see here, 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 here. This is the main line opening where, where um, white ex black exchange the uh, C pawn for a D4 pawn. For D4 pawn. So, black was able to get one of uh, white's uh, central pawns, but in exchange, look at this knight. White's knight on D4 is nicely placed and it controls more squares, which therefore gives you more space on the center. So. There, that, this is the uh, mainline Sicilian where uh, there are different Sicilians that, uh, that that are possible in this position but instead of playing d4 which which is the mainline Sicilian or the open Sicilian we're gonna play Bishop to d5 so so this is the, the start of the Moscow variation the anti-Sicilian uh, one of the an most popular anti-Sicilian and Magnus Carlsen plays this a lot as white with success. Okay, bishop b5, bishop here, we're there. Okay, now. Maybe I can. Uh, I'm not able. Maybe I can just work on chess base. Because, because if uh, not I'm not being seen on, on Lee Chess, then what's the point of doing this on Lee Chess? 
And if you know how to, how leeches can promote my channel when I'm streaming, because I'm using XSplit, uh, let me know. I I like XSplit, and because I have a, a, a an old computer, my old computer cannot handle the uh, resources for OBS. Okay, so I'm going to put this chest base, but chest base, okay. I'm gonna remove this one. Right here. Okay, nice. There we go. Alright, let's just do this in chess base. It's uh more it's easier to type. Oh hello, Coach Joel. Coach Joel International Master. Uh Coach Joel Banawa is in uh is in the house, it's in the it's in the chat. Thank you, thank you. And don't forget to subscribe to International Master Coach Joel Banawa's Twitch channel that's uh uh what is that? What is the uh That's JB2 Mix, right? Twitch.tv forward slash JB2 Mix. I think that is that is his channel and he's going to have a live video, uh, a tutorial with um with a woman master uh, later. And don't forget to be on that chat because I will be there. Uh hopefully I will be there. Okay. Alright, let's go. So here here, 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 here. Okay, so, quote. This used to be the main line of the Moscow Bishop B5 variation. Here. Variation, but Knight D7 has pretty much here. Knight D7 has pretty much supplanted it in high level play probably because it offers much better winning chances for black though more risk as well also the c4 move given here has proven to be tough to meet given that white's only move pawn is on is on white while black's move pawns like here move pawns are white and black's move pawns are on black here Okay. The exchange of light squared bishop favors the white as white in principle because if after bishop d7 uh, in some lines white plans to play c4 with the maroxy bind and try to put its pawn on the light square and if your pawn has the same color as your bishop in by definition it's called bad. So here but white's bishop is bad on b5 therefore you can you know it's good for for white to exchange it exchange his bishop okay if white trades on d7 now or later he doesn't really lose a tempo since both recaptures misplace the capturing piece okay end code so here white played c4 knight f6 okay so this is the uh, first variation so black has an alternative. Let's start with bishop takes here, here, knight there, here. Okay, black is doing the dragon system. Pawn takes, knight takes. So, so this position transposed to take an open Sicilian like dragon. But instead of white's pawn being on c2, now it's on b5. What what's nice about the pawn on b5? Because it restricts, it um, it prevents the um, the the black knight from going to c6. Uh, this is interesting. This is interesting position. Okay, boom 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 boom. Oops, sorry. Gonna delete that. E2. Okay. 
Knight B to D7. Rook D1. Rook C8. Bishop there. Okay. So rook e8 is a novelty. So h6 was played by by Grandmaster Predohevich. Uh, forgive me if I was not able to pronounce his name properly. Versus Grandmaster Kozul in Zadar year 2013. So, it's 6, but in the book it's rook e8 and rook ac1. So, according to uh, Komodo, this is uh, plus 0.15. I'm just gonna. White space advantage code. White space advantage is worth something, and the huge superiority of rook d1 versus rook e8 easily offsets the double pawn. Okay. Okay. So, h6. Let's go back to. Bishop takes b5. Bishop takes b5 was a uh, black's uh, one of black's alternative. Another alternative for black is to play knight c6. Here, here. Okay. Okay. So instead of playing uh, pushing the pawn and trying to to have a dragon, uh, black can also play knight here. Here's another variation. Then castle here. Here's a novelty. Seven bishop takes e6 is a novelty. I don't think it's a novelty. So I'm looking at the chess space right now. Okay. Okay. D4. Oh, so here white decides to uh, give up a pawn on so after d4 instead of playing that I think knight e4 7 bishop c6 bishop c6 d4 so knight takes here d4 uh, so in in this bishop b5 Sicilian um, <clears throat> it's it's normal for white to, to sacrifice a pawn in e4 in exchange of uh, opening this e file try to pressure black's king uh, spe sp specifically the uh, e7 pawn like after let's say the knight moves a uh, place like bishop g5 if I'm not mistaken also with d5 uh, try to gain more space on the uh, center. So, knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, rook e1, here, here. So, after bishop to g bishop to g5, it's paralyzing this bishop on g7 still so because he cannot move to to g7 anymore. Otherwise, the uh, pawn on e7 hangs. Because there are two pieces that are attacking the pawn on e7. h6, and here we go. What is white's best move? Here. Because, again, the pawn on e7 is paralyzed, cannot do anything useful. I mean, it's doing something useful. It's shielding the black king from getting, uh, from being under attack. But right now, imagine playing black and you have this annoying uh, bishop on f6. It's just making your life miserable. Because now you have to move your rook, and now after you move your rook, uh, what are you gonna do? Now you, you lose, you lose the uh, chance to castle. So in just one pawn, you were able to put your bishop here on f6 and make uh, black suffer and lose its uh, 
its um, right to castle on the king's side. Black can still castle on the queen's side. Let's see, after bishop here, over there, okay. Okay, oh, this is crazy. B4, okay, so what is white trying to do here? Trying to open the line? What's going on in here? So if takes, pawn takes pawn, then queen check. That's uh, check and capture. Okay, I don't know, let's see. Here, ah, okay, now I get it. So after takes, pawn go, um, white plays here. The idea of sacrificing a pawn on b4 is to get this pawn to stop controlling uh, the d4 square because after take here now the knight can go to the nice d4 square very clever five okay here here castle okay now he can take black and take the uh the pawn on uh the bishop on f6 but i don't think black can take this this pawn on c4 because of rook c8 that's a pin right Knight b5, in here, here, oops, then here, check, and according to Komodo, this is 1.02, so that means that uh, white, despite of white being two pawns down, the computer thinks that uh, white is up by a pawn, like, and some change, okay. If black, for example, goes here, then white can go here, followed by maybe here, push the pawn, c6. And if black king goes to here, white can play here, push the pawn here to open up the um, the a file. So, mm. wow, wow, uh, this is a super super sharp opening, super sharp opening. Okay, so we have to go back to G6. So instead of Knight F6, one of Black's alternatives is to play G6. I'm gonna promote this line. Okay, so G6. Trade off. Okay, so this is becoming uh, white. What white is wants to? I think white wants to get a Moroxibine position. It's like this is what you call the Moroxibine. If you have a pawn here and a, a pawn here on E4 and C4, which restricts blacks pawns and pieces and this is one of the hardest uh, position to play as black especially if you're an attacking player usually attacking players they like space they like open files they like open diagonals they like um, uh, like good outpost for your knight but with this Maroxy bind guess what you don't have a lot of files maybe the only file or semi open file that you're gonna get is the C file for for black and a d file for for white and after let's say i think they take yes after d4 c takes d4 knight takes d4 and see what happens here even though the white black was able to get a pair of bishops uh white white has this pair of knights and remember and remember guys if you have close position you want to, to do you want to have those knights if you have open position you want to keep the bishops because with the bishops they're more powerful when there are less pawns a lot of open files uh, because if you look at this bishop on c6 uh, where's it what is the what what is it attacking it's attacking this pawn on e4 and it's well defended by this knight on e4 so it's like hitting a wall you're what are you trying to snipe right what are you trying to attack the e4 pawn and here in this kind of position 
uh, most of the time white plays sometimes white plays f3 just to overprotect this uh, pawn in e4 so uh, black won't be able to create uh, uh, more space and remember guys I, I learned this one when I read uh, Grandmaster Yasser Sarawan's book Play Winning Chess and Winning Chess Strategies uh, In the opening usually, uh, maybe it applies in the middle game too There are four things that you want to achieve Those four things are starts with the word more and better You want more space, more material, better pieces and better pawn structure Here, in this position uh, white was able to get more space and if I'm correct if I read this uh, I recommend this book titled Just Structures authored by Grandmaster Mauricio Flores it's a it's an it's an opening book it's not a repertoire book but it tells you what are the plans in pawn structure so he used he uh, named the structures as for example uh, dragon position like this is a dragon position or maroxibine position where and he tells you you know how do i break and why do you usually want to have a break in an opening remember what ya Grandma grandmaster yasser sarawan um <clears throat> mentioned in his book you want to have more space because in the opening, you have problems. One of your main problems is how to get, especially as black, because as white, you get the, the first move. You get the like kind of extra move. You get the first move and get to decide what you want to do with, with your game, how to start with the game. As black, you're already uh, behind one move. In, in both colors, you want to be able to figure out where do I put my knights and bishops where it you know, it's it, it has a lot of uses, it, had a, it has a lot of squares, it controls a lot of squares. Uh, and at the same time, you're trying to prevent your opponent to put their pieces on good squares. That's a battle in the opening. You want to be able to move your pieces on their best squares and to prevent to your opponent to have their, their pieces on, on the good squares. Okay? Keep that in mind. Okay. So after knight takes d4, um, and back to the chest structure, uh, in, especially in dragon, if I'm not mistaken, uh, why black's plan is to play, one of black's break is to play uh, b5 on the right time. You have to be able to break at the right time. I lost many games against masters when I tried to break the position and it's not the, uh, the right time and I get in trouble. Another way for black, uh, maybe not in this position but in, in Maroxibind, position is uh, to play e6 followed by d5 sometimes in dragon uh, you can play f5 but most most of the time it, it doesn't work with f5 but in maroxy bind position a6 b5 uh, is is one of black's main uh, break okay just keep on keep in mind for white what are you planning to do as white here you're planning to keep the position close and expand expand on the king side remember you want to keep the position close because that's what black wants he wants um, more squares so his bishops can have more control of diagonals all right so eight nine d4 push up g here okay here here and here we go this is what i was talking about uh, with the pawn push here, it prevents the knight from jumping on g4, and it also protects, over protects these e4 pawn. Like now, you kind of build, you strengthen the wall that you build to make this bishop on c6 foolish. All right, castle, castle, and this is plus 0.50 according to Komodo. All right. So one of the problems with repertoire rep books is uh, it gives you it's like when you're studying your opening with with the computer it just gives you numbers like who's better who's not but if you know like positional chess the imbalances what are imbalances imbalances are the difference between white and black's position 
I I, I recommend you reading uh, Jeremy Silman's book How to Reassess Chess, and that's how we learned. My my dad uh, read the book and he taught us imbalances using Jeremy Silman's book, and he started with a chess life, his chess life uh, uh, articles like long time ago, but. That's basically it. Imbalances is the difference between white and black's position. So here, white has more space, uh, which means that he can move his pieces. His pieces has more space where it can go. Uh, unlike black, uh, one of black's main problem is like how to gain more space. He has the bishop, but his bishop is uh, is kind of useless. It's functioning less or le still not definitely useless, but it it's hard to you know to. If you question your bishop, where, where's where's the best place for that? I mean, you're hoping for white to play, like take the the pawn, but as white, you don't want to take the the bishop because remember, from my first broadcast, if you have uh, or, or not, I, but the general principle is when you have more space, you don't want to exchange pieces, and you have less space, then uh, you don't you don't want to exchange pieces. So taking the knight the bishop on c6 is is a bad idea. Okay. So coat it's a pretty good Maroxi bind for white since black can only keep his bishop pair by extreme passivity. White has traded off his bad bishop without losing control. Okay. All right. Let's now we have we can go back to the main line. Oh, so instead of knight c6, this is the main line. Knight f6. Okay. So knight f6. Then here, here. Okay. Try to get more space on the center. Okay. And castle. So black is an alternative. Oops, not that one, sorry. This one, H3. Okay, here, king safety. Takes, okay. And this is the second line, or I don't know how many lines did we have. The idea is after uh, black forces the bishop questions the bishop or you know, questions the bishop like what do you want to do you want to go here or take my knight just remember try you, you exchange the bishop for black's knight and don't be afraid to exchange your bishop because some players they do prefer bishops than knight because the position is what it's close so okay bishop takes so instead of bishop takes bishop it's pawn takes bishop Okay, here, here, here. Then knight is being under attack. Pawn takes pawn. Knight here. What? Oh, oh, sorry. So after knight here. Ah, okay, okay. So. Why decided to go here? I was just wondering, like, how come you're giving up this pawn, like here? What is the idea? Because if, like, for example, if Black takes this pawn, you're just if you give up your bishop, then this pawns on g7, f6, uh, and h6 becomes weaker. It died. Black, you're not gonna have any more piece to protect those pawns. And remember, code like. International master coach Joel Banawa always says, like every pawn move creates a weakness. After black uh, move its pawn, then the squares cannot be defended by another piece. Or not another piece, but another pawn. If uh, a pawn, if a square can be defended by pawn, then usually it's not a weakness. But here, bishop takes pawn. I think you can just take. Oh, okay. Take, take, then uh, like gang up on the bishop on d7. And this is. This is not looking good. This is good for white. I think white is winning. Uh, let's see. I'm just uh, gonna turn on the computer a little bit to make a confirmation. So 1.39. Okay, looking good for white. 
So that's what was one of the reason. What about? I'm just wondering after here, I think here. I think White can still play here. What do you guys think? And Bishop is pinned. Cannot move because if it moves like here, then it's an X-ray. You take the queen. And for example, here, maybe here. Not sure. Now it takes pawn. Anyway, it either way, it's looking good for uh, for White. Okay, let's go back to the main line. I hope you guys. I hope this is um, this is uh, helping you. I'm, I I want to finish this one. It may take some time, but I want to share you this line as white, and hopefully you can use this one uh, in blitz, online blitz, or over the board. Okay. Okay, so let's go back here. So after here, here, here takes, knight takes, bishop move, king castles, okay. We already did that. And now bishop takes d7 queen takes d7 so this is another this is the main move queen takes bishop what about after here knight takes d7 then you castle a6 c1 c8 oh, okay rook is gonna get the pawn so you defend it okay Queen flies out to that square. Here. And okay. And rook f to e8. It's a novelty. Novelty means good. Doesn't mean it depends on the move if it's good or bad, but novelty just means it's new. Here, push up here, and there, and knight f3. According to Komodo, that's white is up by a third of, third of a pawn. But white has more space here. Uh, I would prefer playing white because it's easier to uh, move improve your opponent's pieces if you have more space and you have you don't have the uh, bad bishop anymore the light squared bishop which is defined as bad especially if you have you know if you have the uh, same color for bishop but now i have a good bishop right because my bishop is my pawns are placed uh, especially the queen side pawns are placed in the opposite color of my bishop all right okay let's go to Queen takes d7 instead of knight takes bishop. Okay. Here. Okay. Okay. Rook c8. This is the main move. But black, what if black plays this? This normal move. Just move your knight out. there remember guys uh, one of the reasons why black plays here is to uh, figure out how to make that break on the queen side with a6 b5 to get more uh, space okay a4 what about here oh wow this is a novelty this is a novelty. So Queen D8 was played before and um, there are uh, 10 games. was recorded. Okay, let's just see. Hmm. 
Okay, let's just say this move. Mm. Okay. All right. Okay. Instead of e6, when d8, and that's a. Uh, Oh, okay. Okay, I'm just gonna be confused. Let's just focus on e6. So after e6, rook here, queen here, queen is gonna go here, an a5. Queen there, ninety seven. Okay, one of the reasons why black played here on a6 is to prevent the uh, knight from going to b5, but but I don't know. I think black, white can still go there, but not right now. You don't want to exchange pieces because if you go there, it takes oh no, you cannot go there. It's a blunder if you go there. Okay, so. Oh, here. So it's not knight b5 that white can do. It's here. Because the idea of takes, takes, then uh, you cannot go here because you lose some material. So after knight sacrifice, okay, here, takes, takes before, takes here, okay. Oh, after bishop takes knight, uh, this is, even though white is some compensation, even though black, white is a pawn down, uh, after here is black's uh, dark squares are, are weak now. Uh, after the knight moves, if the knight moves, white even has this idea to go bishop h6 just to for a quick checkmate or even move its rook somewhere and maneuvers bishop to b2. I think white is close to winning here, strategically. It's not looking good for black. Okay, here, here, okay, maybe here? Cover that uh, check, okay. I mean, cover that checkmate, then here, uh, okay, here, here. Oh, it's not knight, knight, uh, knight. it's knight there, here, knight seven. And rook c5. Okay. White is a pawn down, but look at black's position. It's cramped. It's knight uh, just kept on jumping around, and black has this isolated pawn, and white is ready to gang up on that pawn, uh, pile up on it, and maybe get move its king closer to the middle. And also, after black, white doubles on the c file, he has this uh, move, b5, because what what do you do with a, an isolated pawn number one is to control the square in front of the pawn so it cannot move uh, then uh, you pile up on it you put a lot of pieces and try to attack it and with b5 because it's pinned after the doubling of rook in the c file you cannot go here you cannot capture the pawn because the rook is on c8 it's going to fall so it's very good. It's point thirty-two according to Komodo. Last point thirty-two. That's uh, like a third. Uh, Coach Joel said maybe for Black you should look for an opportunity to sack the pawn for initiative. You're right. Coach Joel Banawa is right. Correct. It's one of the uh, ways to figure out how to return the pawn, the material, because otherwise uh, white is just going to capture the pawn in c6 and black is black will have no compensation uh, for you know for the activity of white's rook and bishop. Alright. Let's go back to the main line. Alright, so let's go here. Let's 
C1. No, it's not rook C1, it's the main line. It's knight. Oops. It's knight D to E2. Okay, knight D to E2. So, if queen d2, queen here, knight d2 transposes to the game, but there's nothing wrong with the uh, direct knight, knight move here, then knight goes there, rook here, queen here, queen d2, queen here, rook fc1, okay. And also, it's also possible for I to play rook fd1, rook e8, and f4. So, so look what white is doing. He's just trying to gain some space on the king side and try to prevent um, black from um, breaking, creating a pawn break, and get more space. With a pawn in f4, it prevents the knight from jumping to d5. Maybe also, maybe. Like it's uh, if black decided to go suicide with e5, weakening this pawn on um, on d6 and totally abandoning this d5 pawn. Uh, even white, white, I think white can even go here if I'm not mistaken. But I don't know. We'll see. But e5 is just a horrible move that you that especially kids you don't want to to move. It's just it's strategically like horrible. Like weakens the d6 square. Uh, shuts down this bishop uh, temporarily and also weakens the d5 square and the d5 square is already weak you don't want to make it weaker okay so the main move is rook fc fc1 okay over there here Also, again, rook d1, rook d8, oops, this is also okay. This maneuver, maybe white has this idea to go triple on, on the d-file after, ah, sorry, rook f, rook here. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry wrong oh let's just go rook fc1 in here then here here then here bishop bishop goes there and what are you gonna do what are you gonna do as black if you play here on f6 so you kind of just block your bishop and before it was at least it has a, a nice diagonal but if you go f6 totally like block like you put a wall in front of your uh, your own man there did black play no he didn't after here black decided to go here so if you take if white takes then uh now this rook has uh, has more use and maybe black can play like uh uh d5 d5 break but instead of taking it, what do you do when you're up in space? No trades. Bishop goes there, and now white has this nasty discovered attack, trying to get rid of the uh, the bishop on f6. And so you can own the dark squares. And here, and knight f4, stubius. Knight b4, stubius too. Bishop d4 is better, but black played knight b4, a5 here, here, I'm gonna attack your queen, I'm attacking a queen in knight a4, okay, 
C5. Okay, what about here? Instead of knight c5 and c7, uh, then bishop to d2. Just slight advantage. Okay, so let's go back there. Knight a4, c5, knight d6, here, 4. So instead of b4, why does a better move? It's knight here. Knight f d5. After n after here takes. What's going on in here? What happens after? Um, let's see here. Oh, oh, the knight is trapped. You can go here. Ah, I see. Because if you go here, then take. Right? If you go here, then take. Oops. Okay. Alright, got it. And after here, I think you just, you just took the MRC2 plus minus. Got it. Okay, so instead of playing b4, knight fd5 uh, is an excellent move. Okay, b4, knight takes here, and here, and here, take, takes, then bishop d2. Also, instead of bishop d2, rook b3 wins too. Oh, did someone send a chat? Maybe, oh, okay. Right. Right. Okay. Bishop d2, knight takes here, rook takes, rook here, bishop takes, rook takes there, bishop f6 is a dubious move, un quote, an unnecessary queen sacrifice, though probably good enough to win. Knight e2, bishop takes here, queen here, plus minus, it's, uh, that's the winning uh, line as presented. Okay, so bishop f6, rook takes here, rook takes there. Okay, we have three pieces for a uh, queen, and black has a queen and two pawns. So three pieces for a queen and and two pawns. Um, white has this nice d file. Uh, it should be it should be it should be enough to win for white. You don't want to you don't want to go to c8. It's a blunder. So okay, e8 knight d3 plus 1.62. White has only a tiny material edge, a quarter of a pawn, a reckon, but his control of the only file together with the bishop on its ideal square near the king produced decisive threats. End quote. Okay. G3 is a mistake. The correct maneuver is for white to go here, to go there. And G5. So what play G3? Flood right here. Okay now you're going to G5 now. But white black saw that so black sacrifice a pawn. But after here. Oh instead of what if black plays here? 
Then, okay, I'm still going to go to G5. Still, maybe play knight G5. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. King dance, king hunt. Dancing king on e4. What can you do? You gotta. It, you get, Black has to. He cannot stay on that. Um, on the king side because he might get checkmated. So he has to. He's forced to go to e4. Okay. After king, here, uh, you're, you're controlling the square uh, for Black, so he cannot go to f3. G6. Oh, nice. Then here. Should G5. Alright. So, uh, hopefully, um, that's the uh, our lesson for today. Hopefully, you're able to uh, gain some uh, good lines for white against Sicilian. That's anti Sicilian Moscow variation, the bishop d7 line. So, it, just let me know in the comment section what do you think of this, um, this presentation of the opening repertoire uh, and and uh, just let uh, also if you have any suggestions with the opening um, record it and let me know okay don't forget to to share this to your friends post it on your social media subscribe to my twitch channel um, and my youtube channel too all right i'll see you guys on the next show bye